Homies, today it is time to drop a brand new five-star weapons tier list. Tier list time. Since my last one, as the flow of time goes, new knowledge comes out and hey, opinions change. So I can promise you there are going to be a few changes since the last tier list. Now guys, five-star weapons can make a massive big difference to your account or they can massively buff your favorite character, but it's kind of hard to know which ones you should go for. So guys, in today's vid, I'm gonna be dropping all the knowledge on every single five-star weapon so that hopefully it'll help you choose what weapons you may wanna pull for in the future. And the biggest thing, I'm going to explain why a weapon is where it is on the tier list in detail so that you guys can learn the most you can, baby. All right, let's get started. As with every tier list, let's go over the tiers themselves. We've got S plus this time around, the game changers. Now look, weapons, they don't exactly completely change the game when you get them as a character does, but hey, I just like the name of that for S+. These are the best of the best weapons in the entire game, and they are not outclassed by pretty much most of the weapons in Genshin. There's not actually that many S+, tiers. Now going down into S, homies, very strong weapons. They are just a little bit weaker than the S pluses in most situations. They are the second best weapon to the S plus, or they are super versatile and very strong as the name suggests. Going down into A tier, these are solid weapons. Good, great stat sticks, work on a lot of characters, or they're very niche. Their effect is very strong, but probably only works on one, two, maximum, three different characters in the game, making it good but not super versatile then we've got b this is i8 weapons you know what these weapons are they're chill they're cool if you have them you can make them work but the weapons above them in the tier list are going to be better right and then finally d the doo, doo tier yeah these are some of the weakest weapons in the entire game yeah you can make them work but they are most definitely outclassed by everything uh yeah they do do with that out of the way let's get started with the tier list and we're gonna start with claymores first and foremost we've got the beacon of the reed sea yep chat's already laughing about this but beacon of the reed sea and one other weapon tainari's weapon the hunter's path i don't even know if you can get this weapon anymore because holyoverse has not Reran them because you can't rerun Dia and Tainari, they're part of Standard Bear. So rip, but for the people who do have this, and I think they will eventually make it available, let's talk about it. Okay, so Beacon of the Reed Sea, high base attack. It gives crit rate, which is great, but then the passive, it is both HP raising and attack raising at the same time. So it's a little bit weird. It's very niche. It doesn't work on that many characters. It's great for Dia, but Dia's not exactly a great DPS character in the first place. But genuinely, I believe that uh, more characters that come out that scale with HP and want a lot of attack, this is a fantastic stat stick for them. We just don't exactly have those characters in the game as of now. And there's a caveat, you can't run a shield to, with this weapon if you wanna get the full you know, effect out of this weapon. I think solid niche is honestly fair. I think this provides a lot of stats. It is just, as the you know section is named, niche. It's better than Dia. Come on, don't do her like that. Ladies and gentlemen, next up is the Red Horn Stone Thresher, Ito's signature weapon. The description and everything, very short. It gives a lot of crit damage and then boosts up normal and charge attacks based on your defense. A lot of people look at this weapon and think it is just blanket pretty good. You know, it gives a ton of crit damage. Ah, every character has a little bit of defense, so I'll get a little bit of a boost from that. But the real drawback from it is for a five-star weapon and especially for a five-star Claymore, it has pretty low base attack. Claymore characters just attack slower so they normally have higher base attack on the weapons and red horn stone thresher kind of got cut with that low base attack so it's actually not the best stat stick around but if you are a noel main or an ito main this shit goes hard i can guarantee you that but it's not exactly a great stat stick for multiple characters in the game so i am going to put it into the solid niche tier for now because I think that's pretty fair. I think that's where it belongs. Next up is Skyward Pride. Skyward Pride is a pretty okay weapon for a very small amount of characters. I would honestly say the character who uses this weapon the best is 
Eula, okay? It has high base attack, so Eula loves that. And then it gives a lot of energy recharge. And Eula very much so needs a lot of energy recharge. I just went over it in my five-star tier list, but Eula, if she doesn't have her burst up, she is not a great character. She wants a lot of energy, she needs it. With Eula out of the question, I don't know, you can run this on characters like Beto, characters that do rely on energy and do run Emblem, but it usually collects dust on every account. It is maximum I weapons. Most people are gonna use Favonius, and then if you're gonna run a damage dealing weapon, Serpent Spine is just superior to almost every single five-star Claymore on this list. So. I'll keep it in eye for now, but don't be surprised if I move it in just a bit. The next weapon on the list is the Song of Broken Pines. This is Eula's signature weapon, and it pretty much doesn't work on anyone else in the game. It has an absurdly high base attack. That's great. And it has a passive that boosts physical damage, and you get some more attack speed with the stacks. These are all good things for Eula, not really for anyone else in the game as of now yeah you can use it on like razor or something but it, it's it's really not worth pulling for and i'm gonna be completely honest even on eula there are weapons that are very close behind it in terms of performance just because song of broken pines literally is only good on eula i'm gonna put it into i tier but guys if you love eula go get this weapon i don't recommend it if you're not a eula set. next up is the unforged the funny extremely large looking yellow blob this sword provides a lot of stats good base attack and all the effects that just give attack, give attack, give attack, and then even more attack if you have a shield currently on. It's cool, it's a lot of stats, but it's not worth pulling for. If you have it, you can make it work. Like I said, like I've said too many times, it gives a lot of stats, okay, and stats are good. But there are way better stats that we can get from other weapons, especially Serpent Spine, the four star battle pass weapon I've talked about a lot, it's better than this. So I think if you have Unforged, you can absolutely make it work and do good things with it, but definitely not worth pulling for and absolutely not game breaking in any way. You're probably gonna get something better. Last but certainly not least, we've got the final Claymore that we are ranking, the Wolf's Gravestone. This is a Claymore that came out in 1.0. So how did it age compared to all the other Claymores? I'm gonna tell you right now, I think it is the best five-star Claymore that we have in the game right now. It's similar to Unforged in the fact that it gives a lot of attack. Well, here's the thing. It gives even more attack and the passive is easier to proc. So once again, it is just a ton of stats and all the DPS Claymore characters that want a bunch of attack. Eula can use this amazingly. Beto can use this amazingly. It's good. It's not fancy, but Lots of stats. Maybe you can allocate an energy recharge sands because you've got enough attack from that, etc. Maybe you avoid attack sub rolls and energy recharge rolls. It allows you to do that because of just how much stats you get. It can also make up for Bennett not being on the team. It gives that much attack. So Bennett could be on the other team and then you can run Wolf's Gravestone and not, you know, double dip into too much attack and get diminishing returns, all that good stuff. It is definitely the strongest Claymore, but this thing does not break the game open. It may slide into very strong weapons. When I start putting more weapons, more weapons on the tier list, I might start switching things around. But as of right now, I'm gonna keep it at the top of Sol weapons let's get started with the pull arms of Genshin impact and we are going to start with calamity queller this is shen he's signature weapon this thing has the highest base attack of any weapon in the entire game it gives even more attack percent with its stacks and then it gives even just like a damage bonus percent buff that's it the description is very short and it is a lot of stats but at the end of the day it's a little bit lackluster in that like you want more from weapons bro there are some weapons where they are straight up writing a Yu-Gi-Oh card in the description and this is one of those short ones it is solid it actually can be very very strong on a ton of different characters it's just it gives so much attack that if you run this with attack raising characters like Bennett that you can actually get diminishing returns from the weapon and it's not actually that good so on certain teams this weapon actually goes really hard. It is fantastic on Shenha. It's actually very strong on Raiden Shogun. It's actually very strong on um, Xiao. He can use this as well. It's good. It's a solid weapon, but it's one of those weapons that I don't exactly think is worth pulling because there's a lot of very strong pull arms in this game. 
there are ones that are better if you do have a calamity queller it's gonna do some work for you so i think i will put it right here on the tier list calamity queller is solid homies i just want to pop in and say i'm trying to hit 50,000 subs by the end of the year we are pumping out so much content here on youtube all the time one amazingly well edited video by my girlfriend shout outs to alina two youtube shorts every single week and we're even looking for an editor to pump out more content to y'all but hey it's my absolute dream to hit 50k by the end of the year so check if you're subscribed please you guys will not be disappointed with the Genshin content that we're pumping out thank you guys Let's get back to the series. Next up is the beautiful engulfing lightning. This is Raiden Shogun's signature weapon. This thing is pretty darn interesting. It's not versatile, but it is really freaking good. If you want to build a crazy strong Shangling, or you want to make your Raiden Shogun pop off the absolute hardest that she can, pick up an engulfing lightning, but it doesn't give any crit rate or crit damage, which just makes your builds a little bit harder to maximize. You got to get all the stats you can out of your artifacts and sometimes it's hard to get that crit rate and crit damage up with zero assistance from the weapon or your character's ascension stat so it's not a weapon that you need to pick up onto your account just because you think it's cool and you think it's going to work for a lot of characters because it's not really going to perform super high on anyone that isn't Raiden or Shang Ling it'll do all right but yeah, it's so good that I'm going to put it into the very strong tier. Next up is Primordial Jade Wing Spear. This is Xiao's signature weapon, but keep in mind, it is also a standard banner weapon. Standard banner weapons are something very important to think about in this tier list. A lot of you guys may have them, which is great and awesome. And you're going to learn, you know, maybe a little bit more about that weapon and where to use it in this video. But I do not ever really recommend pulling on banners that have a standard banner weapon focus so like when Shao comes around this will be the focus weapon and like if you really do love Shao, you can pull this but like i don't know it just feels a little bit icky to me spending my primos for a standard banner weapon so just keep that in mind but let's talk about how strong primordial j-wing spear is it's really good very high base attack it gives crit rate and then it gives even more attack uh with its passive so awesome stats the crit rate that it grants is pretty low but the thing about this weapon is is it's kind of like the go-to stat stick for pole arm characters there are usually better pole arms for most characters i think shao is like the only one who this is literally their best in slot but jade can most definitely be the second best in slot or maybe third best in slot for a plethora of damage dealing um pole arm characters i'm talking right and shogun uses as well Rosaria, Shang Ling can use this if you can get her ER and EM up. I think it's going to slide into very strong weapons. I think anybody that has this weapon is going to be able to use it to a very strong effect. It is a fantastic stat stick. Jade Wing, very strong. Going into the Skyward Spine. Strong base attack. It gives energy recharge. Great stat. And then it gives attack speed and crit rate, which are kind of use the attack speed is not really useful on very many characters but the crit rate is cool these are useful stats but there's a lot of strong pole arms in the game so it's hard for me to tell you that serpent spine serpent spine i always mix them up skyward spine is really like that good i think this weapon is better than people give it credit for attack great stat energy recharge you need that on a lot of different um pole arm characters shang ling needs energy recharge raiden shogun needs energy recharge they can use this weapon very well but there are just weapons that are better. Like I've said with a couple standards, if you got it, you can make it work. I don't know if you should pull for it though. I mean, I don't even know if they put this thing on banners anymore. So I'm gonna put it at the top of I8 weapons, but just know it is good. Ooh, mama, it's time for Staff of Homeless. One of the best five-star weapons in the entire game. Over 600 base attack, super high. 66 crit damage. Crit damage is extremely valuable. And 66 is a very high amount granted on a weapon, especially with its base attack. And now let's get into its effects. It gives bonus HP. Not every character is gonna benefit from that, but then it raises your damage even further based on your HP. And then there's another effect. If you're below 50, you do even more. This weapon just grants so much stats. It is like a stat stick on steroids. And then for characters like Hu Tao, it makes Hu Tao just go wild hu tao has great four star weapons okay like dragon's bane and deathmatch they work but dude when you get your hands on this staff of homa you feel 
unstoppable. And then uh, Dong Lee. Dude, I run Savahoma on my Dong Lee. And dude, I mean, I'm dropping like 100K meatballs sometimes, okay? I love this weapon. I think most people, most every account would absolutely love to have Savahoma. And I think it still makes it into the S plus tier this time around. Next up is the Staff of Scarlet Sands, another pull arm that I absolutely love. I unfortunately uh, don't have it though. Let's talk about it. It's really good. It gives 44 crit rate. The base attack is pretty decent, but that is because the passive grants attack and elemental mastery. So dude, lots of useful stats for a ton of pole arm characters who Tao can use this to a lot of effect. I'm talking Sean Ling can pop off with this. And then of course it's made for Sino. Okay. So Sino is going to pop off with this Rosaria on reverse melt, which fans of the channel know I love reverse melt Rosaria. She does extremely well with this too. This is another pull arm that like any pull arm character would absolutely love to have on their account and it can take some characters and builds to the next level man oh i absolutely love this weapon and i think it is super freaking versatile i i really do weigh versatility of weapons very strong i think if you are going to pull for a weapon in Genshin, unless you are just a specific character main simp you gotta get their one weapon dude weapons that work on a ton of different characters are the ones that you guys should be pulling for. Scarlet Sands is a weapon that no one is gonna be upset that they have. I'm putting it in S plus. I really do love this one. The final poem are on the list. The Vortex Vanquisher, quite the meme in the Genshin community. This is supposed to be Zhongli's signature weapon, but homies, no one should be pulling this weapon. Nobody should be trying to get this weapon. Zhongli does not even wanna use this, bro. Zhongli wants to stop a homa if he wants to do damage. Jolie wants freaking Black Tassel or Favonius Lance if he wants like shields and to support the team. I mean, like I, I'm being charitable when I say if you got this weapon, you can make it work. Yeah, you can make it work. Homies, it's cringe. Man, I gotta put it in doo-doo. Yeah, don't pull for this weapon, just don't. Some of the coolest and best five-star weapons in the game are up next. It's time for five-star bows. Let's get it started with an absolute banger. Aqua Simulacra. Let me break it down for you huge amount of crit damage beautiful it gives hp which we just went over not useful on a ton of characters it's useful on even less bow characters besides Jalon. and then it has a passive where if you're closer to the enemy you get a damage buff and most characters do actually benefit from this buff the one drawback is it has a pretty low base attack that's how genshin balances weapons is if they have really cracked effects they have really high crit rate or crit damage they usually give them a lower base attack so that's where its faults lie but this weapon is amazing it is best in slot on yay lawn that is about it when it comes to the best in slot but it is a fantastic stat stick and pops off on a ton of different characters melt gone you can go hard with this you can use this on yoimiya and she's gonna do work fish Soul loves this genuinely like every character loves this weapon to do a lot of damage without a doubt in my mind goes into very strong weapons i just don't really think it pushes into s plus the low base attack holds it back the hp is whatever and the passive isn't active all the time tons of characters are gonna love this but it is not absolutely game breaking if it's not on yelon and if you guys do have aqua simulacra or you want to pull for it just remember you guys need a lot of energy recharge because yelon needs to get that burst up to be useful and if you're running this you're not running fab or something that gives her er really strong weapon guys but doesn't make it into s plus chat's already chirping about almost bow i'm just gonna say it this has gotten you signature weapon it is also a part of the standard banner so you may be able to pull it on accident straight up this is just a weapon that it's been power crept it was kind of strong at the time but it's just aged pretty poorly it gives charge attack bonus and it gives attack that's it like i just said it's gone you signature homies Ganyu has better weapons for every single one of her popular teams, okay? Aqua Simulacra, better than Almost Bow on both. Freeze Ganyu, Polar Star is better. It is the best DPS for that team. And then for Melt Ganyu, Hunter's Path, okay? There, spoiled it, all right? Good weapons are coming up. This isn't even the best in slot for the character it is made for. So when would you want to use this weapon? I mean, if it's the only thing you have, but genuinely the craftable weapons, the battle pass weapons for Ganyu are pretty much better than Almost Bow. I got to put it in doo-doo. It's just where my heart lies. I don't like this weapon. If you have it, it's okay, but don't pull for it. One of my favorite weapons in the entire game, Elegy for the end. This weapon, super freaking good. This weapon is not some super high crit rate, super high crit damage weapon. 
So maybe at a glance, you don't think it's broken, but let me break it down. Great base attack, solid, gives energy recharge, super useful stat. It gives elemental mastery. Okay, every character who's gonna wanna run this benefits from the elemental mastery. And then it gives a passive that boosts up your teammates' attack and elemental mastery, all of them. Even when the character with LG is not on the field. This weapon just turns teams into powerhouses. It can really take teams to the next level. Yay Lawn can use Elegy for the end to amazing effect to boost up her reaction teams like Hu Tao, okay? Fischl is gonna wanna run this, okay? Kujo Sara can run this with Raiden. I can't describe how much stats, how much useful effects this weapon gives all packaged into one. Yes, it's a support weapon, but when you get a deeper understanding of the game, you know just how good LG for the end is, man. This goes into S plus tier. It's goaded, it's cracked, and I definitely recommend picking it up if you love Venti or if you just love any of the support bow characters that I just mentioned. Next up is another great bow, ladies and gentlemen, the Hunter's Path. This is Tainari's signature weapon, and it is stuck in purgatory hell like Diaz Beacon of the Reed Sea. We have never seen a rerun for this weapon, so shout out to you if you have it, I guess. I think we'll get a rerun somehow, some way, one day, but I just thought I'd let you know. Guys, Hunter's Path, great freaking weapon. Gives crit rate, good base attack, and then the effect it gives, based on elemental mastery, can really boost the damage of your charge attack characters. Now, not every charge attack character cares about elemental mastery, but the big ones are Tainari himself and Melt Ganyu. This weapon absolutely pops off on Melt Ganyu. And then, dude, even Linny could use this as well as a stat stick. And then if you can get some vape teams working with Linny, he would love to use this weapon. That's kind of where it ends as it's not crazy versatile, but that's three characters that this weapon is pretty much best in slot, it's best in slot on Ganyu and uh, Tainari for their respective roles, which I think is pretty darn impressive. I think most people would like to have this weapon as it's versatile and any charge attack character they get in the future would like to have this. So I think this weapon goes into very strong. I think that's totally fair. Good weapon, strong weapon, big thumb. Next up is Polar Star. Polar Star is very, very, very strong. Great base attack. Crit rate is an amazing effect. And then most characters can actually get the benefit out of the passive and get a lot of the Polar Star stats. This is Child's best in slot. He pops off with it, okay? This is Gone Yu's best weapon on freeze just because of the raw stats it gives. Brings her up to almost 100 crit pretty easily. She can keep up the stacks very easily with her skill, burst, charge attack. And dude, pretty much every DPS character can use Polar Star. You could run this on your Mia. Pretty much every DPS uh, bow is going to benefit from Polar Star. I think this weapon is still unbelievably strong. I'm gonna throw it into S+. S+. Following up with another great bow, we've got Skyward Harp. This is a standard banner weapon, so hopefully you eventually get it off standard banner, or maybe you already have it. Dude, this is one of potentially, if not the best standard banner weapon in the game. It has great base attack, it gives 22% crit rate, which is awesome, and then it gives 20% crit damage. Dude, a lot of these weapon stat sticks, they got great base attack, and they give crit rate, and then it's done. Or they give crit damage, and then it's done. Dude, Skyward Harp gives both, and then the, the passive is, is not great, so let's ignore the passive, but just as a blanket stat stick, throw it on, do a lot of damage. You can put it on like any bow character, and it does really well while some of the other bows might falter on certain characters. It really does get it done. I, I love this weapon. It's so good. I really wish I had it. I think I'm going to put it into very strong. Shout out to my Skyward Harp Habbers. The first great magic is up next. This is Linny's signature weapon. This weapon, at first, looks like a great stat stick. It's above 600 base attack. It gives 66 crit damage, which is awesome. But here, the first effect, charge attack damage. Not every bow character cares about charge attack damage. I'm talking Fischl, Yelan, Yoimiya, they don't personally care. And then the passive. If you have teammates of the same element, you get an attack bonus. If you have team members of another element, you get movement speed. Movement speed, I guess it's cool for like maybe dodging an attack while you're charge attacking, but usually not very useful. And then attack, you know, useful for characters that use attack, but not on ones that don't, like Yelan again, for example. This weapon is good on the characters it's good on. Fantastic on Linny great on Ganyu. That's kind of about where it ends. If you have Linny, you should absolutely get this. But like, it's just less versatile than Aqua. It's less versatile than Polar. 
so that's versatile than skyward harp just not every character can truly benefit from all it has to offer. Tainari uses it well too, keep that in mind, but I think it still stays where it's at because Tainari would rather use some of the weapons above. So I think this goes into like the top of solid niche. It's super niche, but super good, okay? I think this is a very fair rank. Next up is Thundering Pulse. This is Yoi Mia's signature weapon, even though it doesn't even look good on her. Hot take in my opinion. Okay, last time I put this into S plus tier, and I'm gonna be honest, I feel like I just pulled it when I made that tier list and I was slapping it on my Yomi and she was popping off. Dude, this weapon is good. I do not think it belongs in Game Changers. It is less versatile than most. Yes, it gives crit damage and a lot of it. Great, it has good base attack, awesome. But the passive is actually hard to like hold for most characters and it's normal attack based. Bro, the only normal attack based character you're gonna be running is pretty much Yomi on bows that we have now. If someone tried to tell me Aloy, I would, okay. Solid stat stick, but you don't get the max value out of this weapon unless your name is Yoimiya. Mia. So I think it's going into very strong. If you have Yoimiya, Mia, pick it up. If they release more normal attack based characters or if you like meme builds, hey, pick it up. Good weapon. We have made it to the catalyst, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it started with a thousand floating dreams, Nahida's signature weapon. This weapon has for a five star weapon, not the highest base attack, it's solid. And it pretty much, I'm gonna summarize it. It gives a ton of elemental mastery and can grant some elemental damage bonus. And it can grant elemental mastery to the team as well. These are great stats, but I'm gonna be completely honest. There's not that many catalyst characters that super benefit from elemental mastery that wouldn't rather be using sacrificial fragments for the double skill charge. So Sucrose, Kokomi on Bloom, they love these weapons most of the time instead of this weapon. Now on Nahida, it's great. If you're going for some crazy nuke build because of the elemental mastery, it might be pretty great, but it could potentially collect some dust on your account if I'm being honest. So I'm going to keep it in solid to niche weapons this time around, let's get into Risley's signature weapon, Cash Flow Supervision. This is a catalyst weapon that gives attack and crit stats. Cool. That is normal attack based. There are not very many normal attack based catalyst characters in the game. Risley, Wanderer, and then Hazo for the Brave. I I'm just gonna rate these at the same time. Both of these weapons are very niche. They're not gonna feel great having them on your account. You're only gonna use them on those three characters that I named. Or if you just wanna roll with some meme build, Mona DPS, Klee DPS, whatever. But dude, at the end of the day, these aren't versatile weapons. They're not crazy strong. They're not super cracked. And there's even better maybe not better but super strong four star weapon options like wid sith like fav codex if you need the energy solar pearl battle pass weapons dude i don't i'm not huge on either of these weapons genuinely i think they belong in the bottom of solid niche chat here's a look at the tier list right now the solid niche tier is filling up a bit so wanted to give you guys this out view so you guys could you know see exactly where we are at wow two absolute bangers everlasting moon glow the kokomi weapon if you don't know already i am a kokomi main she is my only c6 character she is my favorite character yes i have the donut would i ever tell you to pull for the donut absolutely not baby yeah this, this thing sucks bro it's only good for dps kokomi dps kokomi even at c6 isn't that good okay so at c0 it's bad. Dude, your support Kokomi is gonna wanna run Thrilling Tails. She's gonna wanna run Prototype Amber. Dude, she's gonna wanna run Sacrificial Fragments on certain teams. There are so many better weapons for your Kokomi to run way better than this. Just don't pull for it. If you're like an ultra Kokomi simp, by all means go for it, but it's bad. Following up that with Jade Fall Splendor. Bro, it's not good on anybody. Okay, except Baizu. You have to create shields to get the benefit from it. There are so little characters that do that, so you can't even try to like shoehorn this onto another character. And then bro, just run Prototype Amber. Prototype Amber is cracked. It's so freaking good. Baizu does not need this at all. Just like Kokomi does not need that donut at all. Dude, this thing is freaking mid. It's great on Baizu. It's probably better per capita for the character than the donut, but you don't need this. You don't need to pull this. Just run prototype Amber. Have a nice day. Swirly cake pop weapon. Kagura's Verity is up next. Good base attack. Gives a lot of crit damage. 
Now let's get into the passive. The passive needs you to use your skill multiple times within a short succession to get the maximum value out of this. It's Yai Miko's signature weapon. Of course, she skills, 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 and then you get the instant stacks. It's great. Now for pretty much every other character in the game, except Lisa, not very many characters get the full value out of this weapon. So it is kind of just a stat stick, okay? You can run this on characters like Nahida, which is cool, but it's not a weapon that's necessary by any means. I think it goes in a solid niche. It's decent, it's good. You're not gonna complain if you have it just because the stats are great. So, solid niche. Just like I did on my last tier list, I am going to rate both Lost Prayer and Skyward Atlas at the same time. They are both standard banner weapons. And let's keep it a buck. I think both of these weapons are aggressively mid as hell. I do not enjoy either of these weapons on my account i have both of them they just do not find use because we have so many good four star battle pass even lower three star catalysts in the game dude wind sith crazy good weapon sack frags thrilling tails prototype amber solar pearl dude they're really not good skyward atlas it's like unforged it's like wolf scrape zone it gives a lot of stats so if you can find the use for all the attack and, you know, make up for the rest of the stats you're lacking, like crit, energy recharge, it's fine. And then Lost Prayer, but it's also fine. It gives crit. It gives elemental damage the longer you're on the field. That doesn't actually work for that many characters in the game. I'm going to rate Lost Prayer higher than most of these and i'll probably keep skyward atlas down here i'll throw them in the eye weapons they're chill you can make them work i don't recommend spending your primo gems for them they are i eight at best we've got memory of dust i've said this a lot it's like unforged it's like atlas i'm gonna keep it quick okay i don't even know if they run this weapon anymore to be frank it hasn't been ran in like a year and a half a lot of stats if you have a shield a lot of attack this weapon can surprisingly put up big numbers when you have a shield and on certain characters that actually scale with attack. The math comes out to this weapon is pretty good. I don't recommend pulling it. If you have it, you can make it work. It's fine. It's chill. I will probably put it right here. Gift Skyward Atlas. <laughs> Wrapping this up with the Tome of the Eternal Flow, Nouvellet's signature weapon. Surprise, surprise, it's super cracked on him. But Nouvellet is a very unique character. He scales with HP and uses charged attacks and has energy problems. There are not really very many characters in the game that fit that niche okay yeah you could do charge attack on certain catalysts like mona or yanfei but hp doesn't help their damage at all this weapon is very very niche it's great on nouvellet but that is it that's where it ends you're not gonna really use this on any other characters the the base attack is low the crit damage is great but at the end of the day no one is really benefiting from the full passive so it is at best just a whatever stat stick catalyst i'd rather use wind sith or solar pearl or something like that so this is going to go into solid niche that's the truth it is time for the one-handed swords some of the most fun weapons in all of genshin impact let's start it off with a weapon that isn't very much fun in my opinion a kia Favonia. I have this weapon. I do use this weapon. I run it on my Ayaka because the base attack is really high and great attack percent. Surprisingly decent on her. And this weapon is known for being amazing for Bennett. Why is it amazing for Bennett? Because it has the highest base attack that a one-handed sword can have. And that's how Bennett grants his attack. He doesn't benefit from anything else that this weapon gives. Okay? Nada, zip, zilch. There is another weapon that you should be running on your Bennett. If that is your argument, you should run the other weapon on Bennett if you have both. So if you have it, it's good for Bennett. But besides that, dude, bro, it's physical. There's, there's no physical one-handed swords in this game that are even remotely viable. They're like troll builds, okay? Like Jean and Kachang, no offense if you run that, but dude, uh, Chi Chi, physical Chi, like, come on. This weapon is so whatever. I'm gonna put it into I just because of how high the base attack is and that it works with Bennett, making Bennett give the biggest attack boost. Bennett, one of the best characters in the entire game. It also heals. Oh my. Okay. Yeah, whatever, bro. Kia Flavonia. Woohoo. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, is Freedom Sworn. This is Kazuha's signature weapon. It is very similar to Elegy for the End, but there are some differences. Elegy for the End gives energy recharge, which is an extremely valuable stat every single character in the game benefits from energy recharge freedom sworn grants elemental mastery which is cool but there are less sword characters that are going to benefit from the elemental mastery now the passive is great it works the same where you get the sigils and the sigils boost up your team 
But with Freedom Sworn, it boosts their normal and charge attack damage instead of their attack and elemental mastery. I would argue that these are just worse stats to give to the team. But, dude, this weapon still can pump out some crazy support numbers for your team. It's great on Kazuha, it was made for him. And there are other characters that can use this as well. Layla can use this, Kuki can use this. Bro, even like Nilu on some weird team, I guess can use it, it's kind of weird. But dude, this weapon is a little bit more versatile than it lets on. At the end of the day, it is weaker than Elegy for the end, in my humble opinion. I'm gonna put this into very strong, super good, just weaker than Elegy for the end, and it's not gonna be game breaking at all. You really gotta find those niche scenarios where this weapon is gonna pop off for you. So, very strong. A weapon that is available right now, Haran Gapaku. I love this weapon. I think it looks absolutely fire. I think it's one of the coolest looking weapons in the game. How good is it? It's pretty darn good. Solid base attack. It gives a lot of crit rate, which is great. And then it gives elemental bonus damage to your normal attacks. Not every single character can benefit from this, but the characters that do really, really like it. We've got Ayato popping off with this. Ayaka can actually use this really well with her cryo-infused attacks. Kaching goes crazy with Taranga Paku. And then, yeah, there's some whale builds. Okay, C6 Kazuha, C6 Farina. They do great with Taranga Paku as well. So that is relatively versatile. It is not like the best in slot for all of those characters, but uh, for Ayato it is, but you know what I mean. It is versatile but it's not super cracked. I think it slides into very strong key of Kaj Nasut. In my last tier list, it was more focused on worth your primo gems. So I didn't actually rate this weapon very high. I gotta say, this weapon is kind of crazy. It is Nilu's best in slot. You guys know I love Nilu. Okay, I think Nilu is amazing. She does a ton of damage. She unlocks crazy comps. But there's not like that many characters that can use this. Layla can use this very well. And now, Farina, who is available, who's in the game, who exists, she uses Key of Kajasu to an actually really, really high level on certain teams where she has enough energy recharge. So dude, this weapon does so much. It's not gonna be a weapon that I recommend everybody pull, okay? I think you should pretty much only pull this if you have Nilu, if you have Farina and you wanna make her do a ton of damage and you didn't get her signature or you are like a super Layla fan and want to make her do some crazy melt damage for a team. I really like this weapon. I think most players who get their hands on this are gonna pop off with Kiev Kaja Soup. Sick lo-fi dendro beats to 36 star the Abyss 2. It is light of foliar incision. This is a high thumb signature weapon. It looks really cool. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this weapon's really good. It's got that lower base attack because it gives 88% gosh dilly darn crit damage okay it gives a little bit of crit rate that's cool and then it gives normal charge attack bonus based on the character's elemental mastery so how many characters can realistically use this weapon all high thumb absolutely loves it ayaka can actually do pretty darn well with it even though she doesn't exactly benefit from the elemental mastery and then there's some other characters kaching likes it too there's just actually not that many you know low constellation five-star characters that like this weapon but the ones that do man they really really do love this weapon so i actually think this is one of those weapons that is going to get better as the game progresses and everybody who gets this weapon will like it and i think that that is something important in the tier list you've heard me say it a lot i recommend pulling for weapons only when you can use them on either your favorite or multiple different characters and this weapon does well for those characters so i think i'm going to slide it on in into very strong weapons light of foliar baby all right homies summit shaper let's make it quick it's like all those weapons they get with the shield they give a lot of attack that's cool but dude the competition for one-handed swords in genshin impact even including the four stars is extremely stiff and bro the only character i think even uses this weapon remotely decently is like ayaka Okay, but dude, I do not recommend pulling for this weapon. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with my heart and put it in top of duty, okay? It, it's it's okay. An absolute monster sword has entered the chat. It's Mist Splitter Reforged. I could go on and on about this weapon. I think this weapon is almost like a slight oversight, in my opinion, by the Hoyaverse team because it's got 674 base attack. A huge amount of base attack. And then it grants 44% crit damage, which is a lot, bro. So already at the end of the day, very good. And then dude, 
the passive giving elemental damage bonus it's easy to stack up for most characters pretty much every sword character is gonna get two stacks and then you could get the three if you time your burst right okay so much stats this is the sword i was talking about when i said bennett should just run this because it's the same base attack with way better effects than a key of avonia okay this is best in slot Ayaka. this is best in slot kaching every single dps sword can use this okay i'm talking ayato i'm talking all height them they would all love to have this sword man do i keep elegy as the best weapon in the game i really like elegy man but i'm gonna be honest I, I, I'm gonna throw Miss Splinter up there. Every single sword character wants this weapon. It makes them pop off. It makes them do a ton of damage. Straight up, get this weapon if you like swords. That's the end of the sentence. S plus. Primordial Jade Cutter is up next. I think most people will tell you this weapon is very, very good. It is probably one of the best stat sticks in the game. High base attack, a very high 44 percent crit rate so that is really good and then it's got like the staff of homa light right where it gives hp not every character uses this but then you get a little bit of bonus from the hp this thing gets it done everyone wants this it is the pretty much like second best in slot for almost every sword dps character in the game because miss splitter just edges it out so dude this weapon is definitely into very strong get yourself a primordial j cutter if you don't already have one awesome weapon next up is skyward blade before our finale weapon it's got good base attack it's got energy recharge it gives crit rate there are better weapons in this favonius sword if you're just looking for like energy recharge it grants a lot this weapon is okay it's really just okay i don't want to talk too much crap about it just because it can tide you over if you don't have something better than it you can run it on bennett because you know energy recharge base attack it's cool it's going into i8 weapons i think you can make it work i think you can get stuff done with it but i wouldn't recommend pulling for it and there are definitely better options in the game ladies and gentlemen we've saved the best for last the showstopper the headliner it's splendor of tranquil waters i don't have to say it it's cracked on farina tons of crit damage it increases elemental skill damage and then it gives hp those are cool things but how many characters besides farina actually benefit from that it's elemental skill damage only most one-handed swords do they're doing damage with their burst or with infused normal attacks okay i'll hide them Ayaka, all those characters cool and then hp increase decrease that's not gonna happen on every character not very many at all unless you're running with farina okay cool and then it raises hp that's not super useful for most if not every sword character that wants to do damage because it's a damage dealing sword if we are looking at this just as a stat stick elemental skill damage bonus that's hard to get activated and then it has lower base attack because of the high crit damage so cool stats thick that's cool i think this is very fair in solid or niche don't get it twisted if you have farina it is awesome just like my moderator go for said in the chat quite literally the definition of niche very well said after a very long stream with the homies here on twitch ladies and gentlemen this is my complete updated five star weapons tier list here in genshin impact if you see a weapon on this tier list and it's high you should probably pull it if it's for characters you like but guys look if your favorite character's weapon i'm talking the eula players the baizu players get that weapon because it will make you happy this was just to give you guys some general direction on weapon strength in all of genshin impact as always, I'd like to thank the homies hanging out here on Twitch where I am streaming Genshin and other fun stuff all the time. So come through. This is the number one stop for Genshin Impact live content on the internet, baby. Pfft, no questions asked, okay? But shout outs to you for watching the YouTube in general. And hey, if you're on YouTube, might as well like the video, might as well drop a comment. It helps the algorithm and might as well subscribe because we are on the road to get 50,000 subscribers. It is my absolute dream to hit it by the end of the year it's lofty but it's still possible my friends help your boy out shout out to the patrons okay we got zick alchemist poison tongue boy gophers meow i appreciate all of you and everyone else on patreon thank you for supporting us making content full time and hey i will see you guys in the next video happy holidays we've got some absolute bangers coming up navia guide i can't wait for navia a christmas themed video that you're not gonna want to miss homies have a good one i'll see you next time